Welcome to One Minute Theatre Reviews. I'm Paul Seven Lewis, this is the Hampstead Theatre, and I'm here to review The Forest by Florian Zeller. The once no strings affair is now well and truly tied up with the rest of his life. There are some dramatic and shocking moments which turn this play into almost a thriller. But these days you rarely see gratuitous nudity on stage. French playwright Florian Zeller's work has become pretty familiar to British audiences thanks to plays like The Truth, The Lie, The Height of the Storm and the trilogy of The Mother, The Father and The Son and of course the award-winning film of The Father with Anthony Hopkins. In his new play The Forest, the first to receive its world premiere in the UK, the subject is a married hospital consultant who's been having an affair with a younger woman. As she demands that he legitimises their relationship He's plunged into fear about what that would do to his marriage and career, uh, the two of which are tied together, at, uh, at least in his head, in ways that become clear, um, not to mention guilt at the betrayal of his wife. From the start, we're in familiar Zeller territory as we're plunged into a confusing jigsaw of scenes in which we see the adulterers changing memories, fantasies and fears. Do you always tell the truth? and what happened are recurring questions. Well, that's the one minute review. Keep watching for more about the forest, uh, whether the roller coaster journey is worth the destination, uh, why the set is a triumph, and how well Tony Stevens, Paul McGann, uh, Gina McKee and Angel Colby ride through its varying moods. So you probably know Florian Zeller's approach uh, to playwriting, uh, an innovative way of getting inside people's minds. I mean, although there's nothing very dramatic going on in my head at the moment, this review is going to be affected by my current mood, which is pretty buoyant. But maybe I'd say something different if I was feeling down. And my opinion could change in the future when I consider the play in retrospect. And if I'm not careful, having read the script, I might introduce false memories since there are some changes to it in the production. Zeller's subjects are obviously going through more traumatic situations than I am. In the father it was a brain confused by dementia, in the mother a midlife crisis, in the son a depressed teenage. Zeller achieves this journey inside their minds by having the characters acting out their lies and self-deception and false memories and fears and desires, often repeating scenes with variations of dialogue or even characters, and none of it necessarily in a linear narrative. So his plays are both exhilarating and exhausting. Throughout his plays we're asking ourselves what is the truth, what actually happened, for which there may or may not be an answer. As time has gone on, what was originality became a signature style and is now a cliché. The dazzling displays of technique hide mundane stories. As time has gone on, originality has become a signature style. It may be in danger of becoming a cliché, but not yet. A potentially mundane story is brought alive. OK, you get the idea. So the title refers to a story about a prince out hunting who, in pursuit of a stag that ultimately disappears, becomes lost in a forest. Just as the protagonist here, having pursued his desire without thought for the consequences, finds himself in a bit of a mess. Each of the three acts, uh, there's no interval by the way, uh, begins with the same or at least a similar scene. It sees Pierre, uh, referred to in the cast of characters as Man One and played by Toby Stevens, arriving home. His wife is clearly agitated. Their daughter's long-term boyfriend has been having an affair. Pierre talks to uh, the girl. Don't worry, everything will work itself out, he says. When the scene repeats at the beginning of Act 2, the daughter isn't there. Perhaps as a memory, on the first occasion, Pierre needed a conversation with the daughter to talk out his feelings about his own affair, using her as a cipher. On the second occasion, he talks directly to his wife, albeit still about his daughter's boyfriend's affair, but now he's more concerned with, with her, and therefore in his mind, I assume, his wife's reaction. So he no longer needs the previous scenario. The third time the daughter barely gets a mention but the film, the room, has filled with flowers. And then this scene too. 
a middle-aged man referred to as Man 2 and played by Paul McGann, is in bed with a young woman. We're not in doubt for very long that this is also Pierre. I'm guessing that, in his mind, Pierre has separated his affair from the rest of his life. In other words, he becomes a different person, a kind of alter ego. Before long, we're seeing the same or similar scene, but with Toby Stevens, just as Man 2 is Pierre in the third iteration of the opening scene. This indicates, I think, that the once no-strings affair is now well and truly tied up with the rest of his life. And, by the way, Toby Stevens is brilliant as Man 1, a ready smile that becomes a nervous grin, leaning back that at first seems relaxed, but eventually looks like he's reeling from blows. And Paul McGann holds his own as Man 2, showing some different characteristics, like a brittle harshness that soon collapses into panic. This split character is complex and rounded, the others less so. Uh, I guess that's because they're part of his memory or imagination. I mean, the treatment of the girlfriend uh, in the first bedroom scene is a case in point. When she gets out of bed, you see her breasts before she puts on a shirt. Now, that's perfectly normal in real life, of course, but these days you rarely see gratuitous nudity on stage, so we must assume there's a good reason for it. Actually, in the script, she's fully naked for the whole scene. I take it that this underlines that Pierre sees her as no more than someone he has sex with. She's only given a name later when he starts to take her threat more seriously. Now, excellent as Angel Colby's acting is, there's actually little personality there for her to project. I have to say, despite the limitations of the script, Gina McKee manages, through a combination of strangled speech and sideways glances, to convey a lack of passion that might have been a reason why Pierre strayed, as well as the possibility that she suspects something. I think this is a good point to mention the fantastic set design by Anna Fleischel. It's in three parts. A living room, a bedroom above the living room, and, although it's not in the same house, um, and an office to the side. Each setting is invisible until the lights come up on it. The first two are built with tremendous attention to detail, and this naturalistic setting helps us realise that all that's going on in Pierre's brain is happening while he continues to live out an everyday life. The office is the exception. It's pretty bare, and it seems to be where Pierre's conversations with his conscience take place, or possibly their interrogations by the police. They're carried out mostly by a white-faced man in black, uh, played by Finbard Lynch, um, and he's like a character from an early horror film uh, in appearance. And, then he, and he wheedles Pierre with questions uh, as he alternates uh, between good cop and bad cop from a police procedural. And his biggest question is, what happened? So, what did happen? Well, we can never be quite certain. There are some dramatic and shocking moments which turn this play into almost a thriller, uh, as well as a whodunit. Um, and director Jonathan Kent is to be congratulated for the pace and imbuing all that goes on with an almost Hitchcockian suspense. By the end, we have been given some explanations. Um, the problem for this and uh, other Zeller plays is that the truth, if and when it's discovered, may not be as interesting or exciting as the process that led to the revelation. I give The Forest by Florian Zeller three stars. I hope you found this review interesting and entertaining, or at least one or the other. And if you did, please subscribe by clicking the button below and you'll be the first to know about my future reviews. And please, like, comment, share. Thank you for watching.